We're halfway through spooky season, and that means we're also halfway through The Shape of Fear. But we've still got a lot more to discuss with the Halloween franchise. So today, we're ranking all of the Michael Myers masks. From Captain Kirk to CGI, there have been a lot of them. So join me on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Purely and simply evil. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. There's a lot of history behind the Michael Myers mask. It's one of the most iconic images in horror history, that's for sure. But its creation was very simple. We all know the original Halloween was made for around $325,000. That's not a lot of money to make a movie. So they had to get creative with the mask. They bought a Captain Kirk mask for less than $2. Then Tommy Lee Wallace went to work. He cut out the eye holes, brushed the hair out, and then painted it white to create this icon. Wallace even said that he completed the whole process in about 30 minutes, maybe just a little bit more. Like I said, it was, it was very simple. The sequels used original designs to recreate this iconic mask, but how did they turn out? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. I'm only talking about the actual Myers masks in this video, so I'm not going to be including the bandage mask from Halloween 4 or the clown mask he wore as a, as a kid, or even the myriad of other homemade masks that he wears in the Rob Zombie films. Just the actual Myers masks. We have 16 of these to get through, so I won't be spending a whole lot of time on them, just enough to get the point across. That being said, it is bell time, so grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. Starting us off at number 16 is the damn CGI mask from H2O. This is just an abomination. I don't care the reasoning behind it. I don't care if they ran out of money. I, I don't care. This should have never happened. And once you notice it, it will stick out every single time. I don't want to say too much more. I mean, you can see for yourself just how awful it looks. Let's just move on. At number 15, we have the pink mask from Halloween 4. Yet another abomination. Again, there's no reason this should have happened. I've heard that they didn't notice it until they were already in post, which is, it just sounds stupid to me. Like, how does not a single person notice it when they're actually shooting? It's a pink mask with blonde hair. I mean, come on. Luckily, just like the CGI mask, we only see it for just a moment, but it still sticks out like a sore thumb. Number 14 is going to be the K&B mask from H2O. This is one of four masks that they used for the film, and we've already talked about one before this, but this one just looks weird. The eye shape is this oval shape that just doesn't work for me. Cody Leach actually said it best when he ranked the mask. He said it looks like an alien face, and I seriously couldn't agree more. It's off-putting and not in a scary way, more of a this-is-making-me-nauseous kind of way. I'm glad they decided not to use this one the whole time, but damn, they could have at least got all this worked out before they went to camera. At number 13, we have the Stan Winston mask from H2O. I'm sorry if I'm sounding repetitive, but this one just doesn't work for me either. It's definitely an improvement on the K&B mask, but it still looks weird. The sad thing is, for the most part, the mask itself does a pretty good job of recreating the look of the original. Where it falls short is the eyes. Why in the world did they make the eye holes so big? You can clearly see Michael's eyes and even some of the skin around them. I don't want to see all that. You can actually see Michael's expression change because of it. The eyebrows also look weird to me, and honestly, I just I can't wait to get out of the bad mask section so we can actually talk about the good ones. Our number 12 entrant is the mask from Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. At least this one's unique. I, I guess it's got that going for it. It's a worn down version of the mask from his first movie, and when I say worn down, I mean half the freaking mask is missing. It's hard to see a lot of the detail in the mask because it's damaged and just so dirty. I also don't like the way the hair looks. Whether it actually is or not, the hair looks longer than it did in the first film, which just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, it's a freaking mask. I just don't like that you really can't see much of it. At number 11, we have the mask from Rob Zombie's Halloween. Might as well just go ahead and get them both out of the way. The mask from this movie definitely looks better than the second one, but my feelings about the movie admittedly color my opinion on the mask just a bit. 
I don't think the mask looks completely terrible. It's got some wear on it from being stored under the floorboards for 15 years. I, I get that. There's just something about the way it fits on Tyler Maine. To me, it doesn't look like it's a part of him, which I think is what the best masks do. The mask should be an extension of Michael himself, not something that he just puts on to cover his face. Number 10 is going to be the Halloween 5 mask. I hate this movie, but the mask isn't completely awful. My biggest issue with it is just how long the neck is. It, it looks weird. It kind of sticks out of the coveralls and just, I don't know, it just looks weird. And that could come down to just how it fits Don Shanks. And another thing, this is supposed to be the same exact mask from Halloween 4. I mean, not the same design, but canonically the same mask. The problem is it doesn't look anything like it. It's yet another choice made by Dominique Othan and Gerard. Check out my ranking video of the franchise if you want to know more about how I feel about him and this movie. At number 9, we have the mask from Halloween Resurrection. If I had to describe this mask with one word, it would be... meh. It's the definition of middle of the road for me. It's not egregious, but it's not great either. It's another one where the eye holes are too big and the hair looks kind of weird. It's almost like spiked up. I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. But I will say this about the mask. It doesn't distract me the way some of the other ones do. And that's why I said it's meh. I'm sure a lot of people would have this mask kind of lower on their list, but it's just never bothered me the way that it does other people. So that's why I'm putting it here. This movie has a lot of issues. Don't get me wrong. And the mask is probably the least of those issues, in my opinion. I could go on about these issues, but let's move on to our next entrant instead. Our number eight entrant is the mask from Halloween 4. Look, I get the hate for this one. They tried to design the scary look into this one. They were trying to make it completely emotionless and just completely void of all detail. And sure, it may lack some of the effectiveness, but I don't mind it. I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. I, I guess that would be the best way to describe it. It's a cheap mask Michael picked up from a convenience store. I, I, I understand. Yes, they could have done a better job, but horrible is not a word that I would use to describe it. Like I said, I get why people don't like it. I just have never shared that particular sentiment on this mask. I do think it helps that George P. Wilbur is a great Michael and his movements make the mask less distracting. That's just how I see it. Feel free to let me know if you disagree. Number seven, we have the mask from Halloween Ends. Look, I love the work that Christopher Nelson did on this trilogy. All of the masks are great, but this is definitely my least favorite of the three. It's the same mask from Kills, but more, I don't know, moldy and dirty, I guess. And that's the issue I have. I, I think there's a bit too much mold and dirt on the mask, and it hides a bit too much of the detail. I mean, it does make sense. The mask itself is over 40 years old at this point. It's been burned and then kept in a sewer for a couple years. So, of course, it's going to be damaged and have mold all over it. That makes sense. It looks good, but it could have looked a little bit better, in my opinion. Coming in at number six is the Buchler mask from H2O. John Carl Buchler made the mask for part six, and they were going to use that same design for this movie, but it didn't end up happening that way. This is easily the best mask from H2O, and we only get to see it in that opening scene of the film, which is honestly a shame. I've already mentioned how jacked up the whole mask debacle was in this movie, but sticking with this mask would have gotten rid of so many gripes that a lot of people have with the film, including myself. At number five, we have the mask from Halloween 6. Like I mentioned in the last entry, this mask was made by John Carl Buechler, and to be honest, this felt like the first time they were able to come close to replicating the feel of the original mask. This is another movie that definitely has a lot of issues, but this mask is not one of them. They tried to light the mask to create the shadows and portray the fear that way. Despite the plentiful problems, I can see the effort in this particular department, and I appreciate that. The mask is such a huge part of the character and the franchise that when it's done right, it can elevate the film dramatically, and when it's done wrong, it can really drag the film down. Our number four entrant is the mask from Halloween 2. Look, we all know the story. Yes, this is the exact same mask used in the original film, but they never thought they would 
be making a sequel. So the mask was stored under Deborah Hill's bed and, you know, she was a smoker. So it had some wear on it and there was some discoloration, but it's still the same mask. It still looks great in this film. I think the biggest reason it looks so different is because of Dick Warlock's head being shaped differently than Nick Castle's. That's just how things go sometimes. You can't really do anything about the shape of someone's head. The mask is still scary. It's still very well lit and I still love it. And if you ever wondered what happened to the mask after this film's over, well, Dick Warlock got the mask and kept it for many years. He sold it in 2003 to a collector, and that's where this piece of horror history sits today. At number three, we have the mask from Halloween Kills. Again, this mask was designed by Christopher Nelson. It's the same design used in the previous film, but slightly altered due to the fire at Laurie's house. It looks so good. I think it's the perfect representation of Michael's journey. The mask is burned, but still menacing and scary. Michael is injured, sure, but he's still aggressive and still scary. There's a parallel there that just adds to the overall feel of the film. And as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I forgot to add the mask from the flashback sequence. So I'm just going to go ahead and include that right here and we'll combine these two entrants to make one. It looks fantastic, but the lighting was a bit odd, so it doesn't really make sense to move it any higher than this. Coming in at number two is the mask from Halloween 2018. What can I say? I think this is the best Michael's mask has looked since the original. It's got 40 years of wear on it, but it still maintains that level of intrigue and fear that was so prevalent of the original. Christopher Nelson truly understood the assignment, and it makes me so happy that so much effort was put into getting the look right. Everybody involved knew how to make it work. The lighting is fantastic. They highlighted the shadows in the best possible way. This truly looks like how you would imagine that the mask would look after 40 years. It stays true to the original while still being updated just a bit for contemporary audiences, and I don't think that anybody else could have done a better job with this. And of course, our final entrant in this ranking rumble is the OG Shatner mask from Halloween. There is absolutely nothing I can say about this mask that hasn't been said a million times before. So what I'm going to do is tell you how I felt as a kid seeing the mask. Michael Myers is the only horror villain that I've ever had nightmares about. I remember the first time I saw his pale, white, emotionless face emerge from the shadows behind Lori. I was hooked immediately, and just that blank stare that he gave every time he was watching her. It's pure magic, I think. The mask wasn't used as the focal point. That's what makes it so good. It was used to be an extension of Michael's psyche. He felt nothing. He's emotionless. But the cool thing is, because of how they lit the film, it almost seems as if Michael is actually feeling things. That's how they conveyed that to the audience. And I think it's so damn effective. It adds depth to the fear and the suspense of the movie. I mean, there's a reason he's called The Shape. He lurks in the background and in the shadows until it's just too late. That's why I love the character and the franchise. So, yeah, no surprise, but this is my favorite mask in the series. And there you have it. That is my ranking for all of the masks in the Halloween franchise. Let me know in the comments what mask is your favorite, or let me know which one is your least favorite. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code that you can use to save 20% off of your entire order. So be sure to check that out. You can also find all of my merchandise available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash AndrewDreamer or right under this video here. And I have been reworking the WWH Patreon page and updating some things over there, so be sure to check that out and consider joining us over there or even join the memberships here on YouTube. All of the links are in the description below. Don't forget to like this video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. Now that we've ranked the masks, how do I feel about the movie where this mask doesn't appear? Luckily, you can find out now by watching the video that's appearing on your screen. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.